Hello aspirants, I hope you are doing great. This is the second part of the three part solution video series on UPSC Geoscientist Prelims 2022 question paper. Today we will discuss four sections in including igneous, metamorphic, pet, uh, petrology, sedimentary petrology and paleontology. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first question is, which one of the following basaltic magma with low K2O content originates close to Benny of Joe? The uh, options are option A, Medocenic Ridge Basalts, Sausonite, Boninite, Island Arctholite. Okay, so Gill first stressed the importance of K2O in subduction related rocks and divided them into low potassium tholates or island act tholate series, uh, medium potassium uh, which, uh, which are calc alkaline series and the high potassium series which are of mixed type. A fourth series that is very high potassium also called as sosonite occur uh, also occur but it is very relatively rare. So boninite is an uh, extrusive rock um, high in magnesium and silica which is thought to have uh, thought to be usually formed in four arc basin environment uh, typically during the early stage of the sub subduction they show variable enrichment in the mobile fluid phases such as rubidium barium and potassium so option b and c are eliminated on the other hand, island acetholates originate due to the subduction of oceanic lithosphere subjected to partial melting close to Benny of Schoen. Hence, option D, island acetholates will be the right answer. Next question. Uh, the question is asking you to match the ions with the behavior during the polymerization process. So first of all, let's uh, network formers are uh, elements that tend to increase molecular linkage, thereby increasing the viscosity of the magma. For example, silicon, oxygen, aluminum, these are the network for, uh, formers. Oxygen also act as a bridging ion, as you know, between the silicon and the uh, ox, uh, ox, um, silicon between the silicon tetrahedra. Uh, but the network modifiers are elements that uh, decrease the molecular linkage, for example, iron and magnesium. Hydroxyl ion uh, occupies tetrahedra bonding sites and effectively inhibit the adjacent silica compounds from bridge, bridging together. So, uh, it is a non bridging <coughs> ion. Hence, option D uh, will be the correct answer. Uh, coming on to the next question 39 uh, which one of the following ultramafic rocks uh, represent undepleted or fertile mantle okay so first of all undepleted or fertile mantle means the composition which upon partial melting can give rise to a basaltic melt harzburgites are considered to be infertile mantle rocks that formed as a residues of previous melt extraction dunite are also infertile mantle rock that consists mainly of olivine only in Websterite, the olivine composition is negligible to give rise to a basaltic melt. So, lazulite is most suitable candidate which can undergo partial melting to produce a basaltic melt. Therefore, it is also often referred to as undepleted or, un or fertile mantle. Hence, option D, lazulite, will be the correct answer. Next question, which one of the following rock types does not come under the IUGS classification of rocks? as uh, tonalite, diorite, dolerite, troctolite. As you can see, tonalite and diorite are represented in the QAPF diagram, whereas troctolite is represented in a plagioclase pyroxene olivine triangular plot in the IOGS system. Dolerite is not represented through any of the IOGS classification and hence option C, uh, dolerite is the correct answer. Uh, clinopyroxene bearing nephelinite is called what? Okay, so isolite is an igneous rock consisting uh, essentially of nephelin and augite, which is uh, a, a calcium clinopyroxene. Hence, uh, option B, isolite is the correct answer. For your information, graziniite uh, is uh, anasheime, which uh, a pelspothide bearing nephelinite. Um, uh, um, Foyt is a coarse grain hornblende nephelin cyanide rock. Granite is a azurin rich nephelin cyanide rock. <clears throat> Alkali feldspar rich metasomatic uh, rock associated with carbonatite is known as what? Sovite, bifosite, rahogite, and phenite. Uh, 
बिफोर साइट इज अ डोलोमाइट कार्बोनाटाइट सोवाइट इज अ कोर्स कैलसाइट डार्क कार्बोनाटाइट एंड राहो राहो गाइट इज अ कोर्स डोलोमाइटिक कार्बोनाटाइट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द कार्बोनाटाइट कॉम्प्लेक्सेस कार्बोनाटाइट कॉम्प्लेक्सेस देर इज अ प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ डिस्टिंक्ट मेटा मेटासोमेटिक ऑरियल इन व्हिच ऑल द वॉल वॉल रॉक हैव बीन कन्वर्टेड टू एजरिन रिच एंड अल्काली एम्फीबोल रिच रॉक्स एंड इन सम केसेस टू पोटेशियम फेल्सफायर रिच रॉक्स द मेटासोमेटिक रॉक्स व्हिच आर कॉमनली अकर इन अलोंग दिस सेटिंग्स आर कॉल्ड फेनाइट्स एंड दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड फेनिटाइजेशन सो ऑप्शन डी फेनाइट इज द करेक्ट आंसर The question is asking us to uh, match the intrusive bo igneous body with their form, shape, and occurrence. Okay, so as you know, seal is a concordant tabular body which usually occur parallel to the uh, bedding plane or the plane of weaknesses. Um, as you can see from the figure, figure cone sheet have inward dipping nest of concentric cones. Batholiths are large proton with exposed area greater than hundred square kilometer. So option C matches suitably. suitably and is the correct answer which one of the following crystal growth mechanism can be explained by fick's law uh, as you know uh, for the crystal growth to uh, happen ions must move to the nucleation site or diffusion sites this can be explained through fick's first law of diffusive flux which states that solute will move from a region of high concentration to a re region of low concentration across a concentration gradient so option d diffusion control growth will be the correct answer also the fix second law predicts how diffusion causes the concentration to change with respect to time which of the following are directly controlled by the cooling rate of magma rate of crystal growth rate of nucleation diffusion rate degree of undercooling of magma so as you know inside the magma chamber the cooling rate is an important externally controlled variable that influences the rate of other crystal forming processes that is rate of nucleation growth and diffusion and um, if the uh, cooling rate is high uh, or uh, significant undercooling can result because there is a very limited time for nucleation growth and diffusion to keep pace hence cooling rate directly controls all the parameters given in the option hence option d is the correct answer in a, uh, a foster silica binary phase diagram uh, when the liquid reaches point x at 1557 degrees celsius it begins to react uh, with crystal to form uh, crystals of phosphorite to form enstatite and the liquid remains at point x until the enstatite forming reaction has gone to completion this point x is called what solvus uh, peritectic cotectic eutectic okay so uh, as you can see in the dia uh, the question is asking what is that point x is called so uh, let us locate the uh, x in the olivin silica uh, phase diagram as you can see uh, point x is an invariant point at 15.1557 degree celsius, celsius where liquid enstatite and phosphorite exist simultaneously this is called a peritectic point hence option b uh, is the right answer consider the following four geochemical reservoirs uh, and identify the correct code the question is asking us to identify the uh, following four reservoir in a strontium and uh, neodymium isotope ratio graph as you can see from the uh, this very graph the depleted reservoir is represented by uh, morb you can see from this diagram to the right um, <coughs> Uh, with a high neodymium and lower strontium ratio morb is the depleted reservoir so a represents a depleted reservoir now continental crust has a uh, high strontium and low neodymium ratio and d represents this pattern of continental crust now oibs represent initial um, oibs they represent initial uh, major reservoirs in the mantle so b is enriched mantle one continental basalt so more enrichment as they represent mixtures of various components <coughs> including mantle plumes uh, subcontinental lithosphere and continental crust so option b uh, option a will be the correct match
which one of the following rocks shows high uh, large and lithophile to uh, high field strength uh, element uh, subduction signature okay so this question is bit tricky and we have to understand what exactly is the meaning of this question our understanding is that the question is asking to find out the rock which shows LIL by HFS trace element signature close to that of subduction zone signature. So this is the, the this is the graph, the first graph that shows the subduction zone signatures. As you can infer, the ratio mostly is within n is to one. The LIL by HFS ratio is between what n is to one. The second graph, this uh, shows the signature for anorthosite. If you see, the ratio varies between n is to one here as well. This is the third graph. Uh, this is for lamproids. It shows a very high ratio around 1000 is to 1 for LIL to HS, HFS and much more than th that of the subduction signature that I have shown in the first graph. And the fourth one here represents the MORB, which has a very low uh, ratio than that of subduction zones. So, and, uh, therefore, our understanding is uh, option C anorthosite will be the uh, right answer. Okay, so now let us look at the questions from metamorphic petrology. Which one of the following uh, chemical system is closest to the composition of cell? As you may have known, uh, a typical cell is composed of about 58% clay mineral, 28% quartz, 6% 6, 6 uh, potassium or sodium feldspar, 5% uh, carbonate minerals and 2% iron oxides. So the appropriate option that correctly represents this comp composition is option A. <clears throat> which one of the following characteristic mineral uh, forms due to shock metamorphism and is normally not present on the earth uh, quartz thesovite labradorite umpazite <clears throat> as you would know impact or shock metamorphism is generated by explosive volcanic eruptions or relatively rare collision of extraterrestrial objects with uh, within with earth the ultra high pressure minerals such as the silica polymorph, coisite, and cisobite produce these rocks called impactites. So, option B will be the right answer. Next question the question is uh, asking us to match the type of metamorphism with the attributes or features associated with them. Okay, so mylonite is a metamorphic rock formed by ductile uh, deformation during intense shearing encounter during folding, folding and faulting, which is termed as cataclastic or dynamic metamorphism. So option C matches with option 1 from uh, list 2. Now hornflesh is a fine textured metamorphic rock formed by contact or thermal metamorphism. Hence option A matches with option 3 from list 2. So option b will be the right combination and um, will be the right answer <clears throat> this question is asking us to match the metamorphic structure with their respective characteristic features firstly ogen are uh, large lenticular eye shaped mineral grains or mineral aggregate aggregates visible in some foliated metamorphic rocks a metamorphic rock which is clotted with uh, organ is uh, often called a, uh, called an uh, organist. So A matches with 3 from list 2. Slick inside is a smoothly polished surface caused by frictional movement between rocks along the two sides of a fault. Uh, they are generally in form of lineation. So she, C matches with 4 from list 2. As option B contains this combination, it is the right answer. Uh, helicytic folds are indicator of post kinematic porphyry uh, blast growth because SI is folded, SE is folded, both SI and SE are not folded, pressure shadows are developed. So, what are the symbol SI and SE represent? If the matrix was foliated before poikiloblast growth, uh, the inclusion within the porphyry blast may record uh, that earlier foliation as an internal foliation. Uh, which is also noted as S or called SI. When SI is compared to an external foliation, the external one is typically referred to as the external foliation S or SE. Uh, now, helicytic fold means that SI is folded, uh, that is, the internal foliation is folded because helicytic folds indicate that the porphyroblast grew after both S1 and S2, that is, the axial surfaces of the folds had formed. So, helicytic folds 
are thus an indicator of post kinematic porphyroblast growth hence option a is the correct answer you can refer to the diagram from winter book as well during compression one stretch direction sigma 1 is dominant which produces the deformation features known as folds or flattening tension fracture pure shear lithostatic pressure so if the compression direction sigma 1 is horizontal it will create folding and if the component is vertical it will create flattening so option a will be the right answer deformation through change of shape of grains by crystal plasticity is known as dislocation creep diffusion creep grain boundary sliding brittle deformation the answer will be diffusion creep uh, why it is understood that diffusion creep refers to the deformation of crystalline solids uh, by the diffusion of vacancies through their crystal lattice it results in plastic deformation of the material a material that was formed by diffusion creep uh, can have flattened grains in materials that were deformed under very high temperature lobed grains uh, lobed grain boundaries may may be taken as evidence of diffusion creep so option a is the correct answer uh, which faces represent the essential assemblage of opposite garnet kyanite as you may have known eclogite is a metamorphic rock uh, that contain garnet with composition between almandine to pyrope Hosted in a matrix of sodium rich pyroxene opposite. Uh, accessory minerals include kyanite, rutile, uh, uh, quartz, lawsonite, coesite, amphibole, fengite, uh, etc. And also contains diamond. Hence, option A is the right answer. Blue schist species rocks uh, are formed at unusually high pressure and uh, low temperature condition, which occur at um okay so subduction blue cysts are formed majorly in association with subject subduction zone and reflect burial to high pressure at relatively lower temperatures however recent findings suggest an uh, association of uh, blue blue cyst phases with ophiolite in continental collision zones as well so uh, in this is for example found in the naga thrust region hence option c will be the most suitable answer <coughs> Which of the following minerals are commonly present as a characteristic assemblage of amphibolite faces of mafic rocks? In amphibolite faces, uh, the basic protolith contains the assemblage of hornblende, cal uh, calcium plagioclase, that is oligoclase anorthite, um, epidote, uh, almandine garnet, diopside, coming to night, grunerite, augite, quartz, ilmenite, magnetite. Hence, option A is the correct answer. Which one of the following represents the correct sequence of high pressure temperature uh, metamorphic phases series? <clears throat> the high uh, pressure temperature series typically occurs in subduction zones where normal isotherms are depressed by the subduction of cool lithosphere. The phases uh, sequence here is uh, geolite, uh, prehanite pumpelite phases, uh, blue cyst phases, then eclogite phases. Phases in parenthesis may not be developed. So option B is the right answer. <clears throat> the medium uh, pressure temperature series is also um, the medium pressure temperature series is also known as uh, contact phases series, Buchan phases series, Barovian phases series, or Franciscan uh, phases series. Now, the medium pressure temperature series is characteristic of common orogenic belts, which are typically referred to as Barovian type, uh, where the sequence is geolite phases. Prehanite pumpelite phases, green cyst phases, amphibolite phases, and granulite, granulite phases. Okay, and then uh, the next set of questions are from sedimentary petrology. Um, the sharpness or pickedness of a grain size frequency curve is referred to as skewness cortosis uh, mode standard deviation. Grain size frequency curves can show uh, various degree of sharpness or pickedness. The degree of pickedness is called cortosis. Hence, option B is the correct answer.
Consider the following statements regarding our origin and distribution of different sedimentary rocks through geological ages. Okay, so uh, relative volume of shale per unit age has remained nearly constant since Precambrian. Iron rich sed uh, sedimentary rocks preserved per unit age have decreased in the post Precambrian period. Preserved carbonate rocks per unit age have decreased in the post Precambrian period. Okay, so, as you can see from this diagram on the right, <coughs> The time is in the x axis and the volume percentage is in the y axis. The relative volume of shells and their metamorphic equivalent has remained nearly constant since Precambrian. Uh, so, uh, option one is correct. Statement one is correct. The iron rich sedimentary rocks represented by jaspilite in this diagram decreased in the post Precambrian period. So, um, um, the statement two is also correct. But the preserved carbonate represented by dolomites and uh, um, dolomites and limestones in this diagram have eventually increased over the time in post Precambrian period. So, um, statement 3 is incorrect. Hence, statement 1, 2 are true, but 3 is not correct. Hence, A is the right answer. <coughs> uh, intercrystalline uh, porosity represents um, which of the following? So, in intercrystalline porosity uh, occurs between individual crystals of a crystalline rock or between the framework grains. They are of primary origin. It is most of, uh, most characteristic of carbonates which have undergone crystallization and is particularly important in recrystallized dolomites. The pore of crystalline rocks are essentially planar cavities which intersect obliquely with one another. Hence, option B is the right answer. <coughs> the depth <clears throat> the depth to which the surface waves affect a water body is referred to as wave front, wave base, wave vortex, or amplitude of the wave. The wave base is the maxim maximum uh, depth uh, at which water waves passage causes significant water motion. At water depths deeper than the wave base, bottom sediments and the seafloor are no longer stirred uh, by the wave motion above. A wave base is represented as half of the wavelength, as you can see from the diagram to your right. So, the correct uh, answer is option B, web base. <coughs> uh, consider the following statements regarding reactivation surfaces in a cross uh, strata set. Okay, so uh, the, they attribute to modification in previously formed bed forms. They form due to erosion by wave of wave or current. They form due to change in flow direction. They form due to erosion resulting from interaction of bed forms. Okay, so, in places where there is one dominant direction of tidal current, the bed, bed forms migrate in that direction, uh, producing unidirectional cross stratification. These bed forms um, can be modified by the reverse current, uh, principally by the removal of the crest of the subaqueous dune. So, statement 1, 2, 3 are correct. When the bed form recommences migration in the direction of the dominant flow, um, dominant flow, the cross strata build out from the eroded surface. This leaves a minor erosion surface within the cross stratification, as you can see from the red line in the diagram, which is termed as a reactivation surface. So, statement four is also true. Hence, option D is the correct answer. Which one of the following assemblage correctly represents coated non-skeletal allochemes in a carbonate rock? Uh, okay, so non-skeletal means chemically precipitated or inorganically uh, produced components and coated means the material is precipitated around the nucleus. As you can see from the figure below, coeds, piezoids and non-coeds source such characteristic. Hence, option D is the right answer. Which one of the following pairs is not correctly matched? Okay, so as you can see uh, from the allochthonous limestone classification, wax stone contains greater than 10% green along with some lime mud. Hence, option C, C here is not correctly matched. And according to the question, C will be the right answer. Wax stone contains greater than 10% of the grains. <clears throat> Which one of the following ar uh, arrange arrangements uh, correctly represent the sub environments from landward to seaward direction in shallow marine setting? 
as you can see from the diagram the land to sea direction can be divided into beach surface and offshore the beach starts with back shore and ends with swash zone then the shore uh, surface includes the soling zone which is divided into surf zone and breaker zone the soling zone extends up to the offshore transition zone so the most appropriate sequence is option a that is back first the back shore then the swash zone then surf zone and then the then the soling zone Okay, so, uh, the next question is asking us to match the features with their respective sedimentary environments. Uh, option A and B are well known to you. That is, the moraines are glacial deposits and natural levees are associated with meandering rivers, right? Uh, but the berm uh, is a ridge located to the rear uh, rear of a beach, immediately above the mean water mean high water level. It is uh, marked by the break of slope at the sewer edge, <coughs> seaward edge. It uh, separates the foreshore from the backshore. So, berm is a feature associated with the shore. Hamaki cross strata are uh, present towards the outer shoaling zone, which extend to the self. So, option B is the right answer here. You can see berm from here. It's a shore zone feature. A bay head delta uh, develops commonly in which of the following? Uh, which of the following? Tide dominated estuary, wave dominated estuary, tidal flat, macro tidal coast. Okay, so as you can see from the figure of the wave dominated estuary, it has three broad divisions. That is the bay head delta, the central lagoon, and the beach barrier. So option B is the correct answer. That is wave dominated estuary. Which one of the following is the characteristic of pressure solution process during diagenesis of carbonate rocks? Okay, so uh, as con consequence of effect of overburden during diagenesis, some of the mineral um, material dissolve away from the contact and re-precipitate it on free surfaces of the, of the mineral grains. This process is called pressure solution or pressure dissolution and it results in grain becoming interlocked as you can see from the diagram. This type of contact between the grains is called sutured contact. Hence option D is the correct answer that is formation of interpreting interpenetrating sutured contacts between the grains. Uh, now let's move on to the questions from paleontology section. Consider the following statement. The state of preservation of fossil depend upon structure and composition of the original cell, nature and grain size of the enclosing sediment, chemical condition and at the time of uh, sedimentation, diagenesis taking place in the rock after deposition. Which of the statements given above are correct? The state of preservation of fossil depends upon the various factors. Firstly, the organisms should have uh, hard parts that is the cell, cells, bones, etc. Also, their composition and structure is also important in, uh, um, in terms of determining their state of preservation. So, statement one is true. Rapid burial of organisms under death, after death under a thick uh, cover of sediments is essential. And statement two is true. Um, true. Environment plays a very important role as well. As you know, marine fossils are uh, better preserved as there is a less chance of exp exp uh, exposed to oxidative de decay. Hence, statement 3 is also true. Diagenesis will modify an organ uh, organic object's original chemical and uh, structural properties and will govern its ultimate fate in terms of preservation or de destruction. So, statement 4 is true as well. So, option D is the correct answer. That is, all the statements are true. When a holotype has been lost, a new specimen of a previously described species designated to serve as the type specimen is known as what neotype, paratype, syntype, or lectotype. To maintain the nomenclature stability or solve doubtful or confusing identities, a new specimen of a previously described species is designated to serve as the type specimen by replacing a previously uh, existing holotype which is lost now. The new species is known as neotype. So, option A is the right answer here. Next question. Uh, the earliest brachiopods are of uh, 
from which um, of the age lower cambrian upper ordovician lower silurian upper carboniferous okay the earliest brachiopod fossils appeared in the early cambrian period that is the lower cambrian period the oldest known brachiopod is uh, aldan aldanotreta uh, sunagenesis uh, from the lowest themothian age so option a lower cambrian is the correct answer The trilobites having larger uh, pygidium um, than the cephalon are known as what? Micro, uh, Microphagus, heteropygus, isophagus, um, macrophagus. The trilobite body is, as you know, divided into three distinct, distinct sections. Uh, that is the cephalon, which is the head, uh, thorax, that is the body part, and the pygidium, uh, that is the tail region. In microphagus, the pygidium is considerably smaller. Uh, than the cephalon in sub isophagus the pygidium is slightly smaller than the cephalon in isophagus the cephalon and the pygidium are more or less of equal size in macrophagus the pygidium is larger than the cephalon you can see this differentiation in the diagram so here option d is the right answer macrophagus The type of dentition in bivalves consisting of small simple teeth near the edge of the valve is known as um, taxodont, disodont, scissodont, or heterodont. Uh, in taxodont, uh, rows of uh, numerous subparallel teeth of smaller size is generally seen. In heterodont, um, heterodont represents two or three uh, dentition below the umbo. And in scissodon teeth, uh, teeth are very large with a number of parallel groups. But in disodon, uh, it represents a few simple teeth at the edge of the valve. So the option B is the right answer here. Consider the following statements regarding cephalopods. The cephalopods are marine um, and uh, are one of the highly evolved mollusks. Uh, the class cephalopod is classified into three subclasses, namely Nautiloidia, Ammonoidia, and uh, uh, Colida. Uh, the only living cephalopod genus with a coiled external cell is Nautilus. Okay, so cephalopods are diverse, highly uh, diverse and highly evolved and morphologically complex class of mollusks. Uh, they have they are exclusively marine and they, and they occupy the same ecological niche as feces. So statement one is correct. Uh, the class cephalopoda consists of three subclasses, among which Nautilida and Ammonida are commonly found as fossils. Colida are the third subclasses comprising of primarily soft bodied animals so statement 2 is correct um, nautilus uh, are the sole living cephalopods whose bony body structure is externalized as a spiny uh, spiral cell the animal can withdraw into completely into its cell and close the opening with a leathery hooded hood formed from two specially lobed tentacles hence option three is uh, correct as well so option d is the right answer that is all the statements are correct the planktic larvae formed by hatching of gastropod eggs are known as what? Trochophore or uh, Ospradia varices of operculum. So let us understand the terms given in the option. So Ospradium uh, occurs in the mantle cavity of marine gastropoda. This acts as a chemoreceptor which is concerned with the detection of food in water. The varix is a thickened axial ridge, a sub-cylindrical protrusion in the cell which exists in some families of marine gastropoda. Uh, operculum serves as a sort of trap door to close the aperture of the cell when uh, the soft parts of the animal are retracted. retracted. And the trochophore, also called, called as trochosphere, small translucent free swimming larva characteristic of more marine annelids and most gastro gastropods. So option A is the right answer. Uh, next question is which one of the following major changes has not uh, been observed during the evolutionary history of horses? Okay, the line leading from uh, Eohippus to the modern horse uh, exhibits certain distinct evolutionary trends like increase in size, the body size, reduction in the number of hoops or the toe, um, loss of the foot pads, uh, lengthening of the legs, fusion of the independent bones of the lower legs, elongation of the muzzle, uh, increase in the size and complexity of the brain, 
and development of crested high high crown teeth suited to grazing uh, increase in number of two is incorrect and hence option a is the right answer as per the question the next question ask uh, the blocks of great pyramids of uh, giza near cairo um, are composed of limestone containing what Okay, so new a new study has determined that many of the uh, Egypt's pyramids contain hundreds and thousands of marine fossil, most of which are fully intact and preserved in the walls of the structure. The limestone used in these walls uh, was found to contain numerous cell fossils of pneumolites. So option Option A, numulates is the right answer. Okay, the next question, which one of the following is a lower Gondwana root fossil? Uh, the um, the roots of the gas um, glossopteris and uh, gangamopteris plants are called vertebraria um, and the form has a median ridge or depression with a rectangular lateral seg uh, segments present on its either side that gives it the appearance similar to that of vertebral column of vertebrates uh, its stratigraphic range ranges from upper carboniferous to middle triassic so the option d is the right answer here I'm sorry, I skipped the last two questions. Uh, which one of the following hominin species was the first widespread human uh, which spread across Africa, Europe and Asia? So Homo erectus was the most geographically widespread species apart from Homo sapiens. It appeared in Africa about 2 million years ago and uh, um, after evolving from either a late form of Australopithecus or one of the more primitive forms of Homo and went on to spread into many parts of Asia and Europe. It was the first of our relatives to have human-like body proportions first uh, and also first non-hominin to migrate out of Africa. So Homo erectus is the right answer. Uh, which, of the uh, which of the following is not an upper Gondwana plant fossil? Uh, it is autosomites. Uh, and which one of the following is not an upper Gondwana plant fossil? So, autosomites, dictyosomites, and Nilsonia are from upper Gondwana, but the Uriphylum is from lower Gondwana. So, Uriphylum option D, Uriphylum is the right answer. That's it for today. If you have found something meaningful, consider sharing this with your other fellow aspirants who are preparing for UPSC Combined Geoscientist Examination. Our Combined Geoscientist 2023 Prelim State Series is now live for both GS and Geology papers. If you are interested, do check out the links given in the description box below or you can visit our website. See you in the next video.